And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Baptornis. This one, I will say, is also a bit of a stretch, like last week, because it doesn't appear in Prehistoric Planet, but Hesperornis is in Prehistoric Planet too. We already covered Hesperornis, as I mentioned, in episode 250, but Baptornis is related to Hesperornis. The Hesperornithiform? Yes. And it also lived in the Western Interior Seaway, like Hesperornis in the late Cretaceous too. So it lived in what is now Kansas, which we mentioned at the time was mostly the Western Interior Seaway. It was in the Neobrara Formation. It's also been found in what is now Sweden. <laughs> where Yeah, where the Tergay Strait joined the North Sea. I've never heard of something which has been found in Kansas and Sweden. And between, <laughs> that's a really funny combination. Yep, now you have. <laughs> so Baptornis looked kind of like a penguin, but it had a longer neck and teeth. It was about the size of a loon, and loons are about 28 to 32 inches, or 71 to 81 centimeters long, and they weigh about 9 to 12 pounds, or 4 to 5 and a half kilograms. Baptornis was good at diving and swimming. It was probably a really great swimmer, but not great at moving on land. Its lower legs were close to its body, and the feet stretched out sideways, so it would have toppled over if it was moving upright. It was in a permanent plie? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, based on how its lower legs were, it would have pointed its toes forward and waddled or took small hops to move around on land. Baptornis ate fish. There's one specimen that was found with copper lights that are about 0.4 inches or 1 centimeter in diameter, and they have remains of a fish. <laughs> it's good to know what the diameter of a <laughs> Baptornis poo was. <laughs> yeah. Glad we have that detail. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Baptornis probably hunted smaller, more mobile prey compared to its relatives that were larger, and it would have held its prey in its beak. Hesper ornithiforms may have been able to hold and turn their prey as they swallowed it headfirst. Hmm. The type species is Baptornis advenus, and the genus name means diving bird. O.C. Marsh found the first fossils in the 1870s and then named Baptornis in 1877. The holotype includes parts of the foot, which probably belong to separate specimens, so now only one of them is the type specimen. It's another Bone Wars dinosaur, along with Hesperornis. Yeah. It looks like Hesperornis was also Marsh. Mm -hmm. Really seems like Marsh won the Bone Wars. <laughs> no. Depends on how you define one. Named the best dinosaurs from it. Hmm. That is one way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> now, in 1977, Larry Martin and Orville Bonner wrote about a fragmentary, immature Baptornis specimen. It included the vertebrae, pelvis, parts of the legs and feet, and parts of the jaw. Other specimens have since been found, many of them juveniles. A young specimen was found in an area that may mean that Baptornis either traveled a long distance from shore or it nested somewhere nearby, like maybe some kind of island. Oh yeah, like we were talking about with the islands. They don't all survive, so <laughs> yeah. it could be hard to know. Many Baptornis specimens are isolated bones. There's only five specimens that have been found that have more than a single bone or element. Though in 2015, Alyssa Bell and Louis Chiappi said that there may be more in museum collections. Baptornis may have migrated based on fossils being found as far south as Kansas and as far north as Canada. And Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it lived in a subtropical to temperate climate. And there was a second species of Baptornis, Baptornis varneri, named in 2007 by James Martin and Amanda Cordes Person, but later that one was reclassified as Brodavis, which is another Hesper ornithiform that's about twice the size of Baptornis. I'm glad I'm not the only one who had to say Hesper ornithiform. <laughs> it's a really hard word to say. It is. <laughs> now, going back to Sweden, the fossils found in Sweden originally were thought to be a Cretaceous flamingo <laughs> <laughs> called Parascaniornis stentioi which lived in the late Cretaceous. But later it was found to be Baptornis. They found a vertebra, so it's not enough to compare and know if this is a second Baptornis species. Yeah, you know, a single vertebra can be difficult. Yes. 
So they found that there wasn't enough to make Periscaniornis its own species, that Cretaceous flamingo, but it's still unclear if this vertebra is a junior synonym of Baptornis. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left.